today we're going to make a book from scratch. Well, actually, two books from scratch. Hi, my name is Lynn and this is the Darwin Orb channel where we play and build and experiment with all sorts of fun things in the shop. This video is part of a bookbinding series which is all about exploring the world of bookbinding, making tools and now making an actual book from scratch. Okay, the tools we're going to be using include a book press, a book vise, a book plow and a sewing frame. Most of which are nice to have, but not completely necessary if you want to try this on your own. Other than that, um, paper, a computer, a printer, miscellaneous stuff like thread, cord, fabric, etc. Books. I, I love them and I find the world of bookbinding fascinating. If you look inside a hardcover book, especially an old one, if you take it apart, it may surprise you to see just how much craftsmanship actually goes into making a book like this. Obviously, you can bind a blank journal, your own writing. However, considering how much work goes into binding something, I think it makes sense to print and bind an actual book. Perhaps a favorite of yours or something that you want to read that you can't even find to buy anymore because it's out of print or it's outrageously expensive to buy because it's so rare these days. I'm sure you heard of sites like Project Gutenberg. Open source books. You know, most of the greatest books ever written are old, hence open source. And you can look through there and download and edit and print your very own version. And that's what we're going to do today. So step one, find a book. Then go through the text in a word processing program because a lot of old books were scanned in ways where there are weird spaces and signs and awkward spellings and you might want to clean that up and that's going to take a while so it's a good project to keep on the back burner. And if you want you can put your spin on the text with notes or foreword or stuff like that. I mean you can do whatever you want. You can make it your own. So once you have your text, you have edited the file, you need a software to help you put it into signatures. Signatures is like sheets of paper bundled up. Uh, we wanted to use four page signatures, so that's 16 pages. Um, but it, it's, it's kind of complicated in your mind because when you think about it, you have four pages here. This is the first signature and I marked out the pages. So we have page one, page two, page three, page four, page five. Now if we actually look at this first piece of paper, what pages do we have here? Well we have one, two, fifteen and sixteen. So it's not obvious like what pages are going to be on each piece of paper. And this is just kind of a mess and hard to, <laughs> to structure on your own, which is why you need some sort of program that can manipulate the text and put it into the signature so it knows how to divide the text in this manner. We use InDesign by Adobe, which is a ridiculously expensive, but it's a really nice program. And it makes the process of processing these various pages into the format of this signature very easy. So once you have all your signatures created in in design and you have it formatted and everything the way you want it, you export it as a PDF. Then you send it to your printer and print the pages. I highly recommend putting page numbers on your pages so that if something gets out of like order later on you can you can get it right because it's very easy to get confused when you're dealing with all of these different pages and it's not straightforward in the way you might think it would be initially. In terms of printing, it's a lot easier if you're using standard size paper like this, then you can use a regular printer. We have an auto duplexing printer, which means that it can print on both sides of the, the paper. It brings it in, brings it back. And actually the printer that we have was really quite cheap. You know, it's a really cheap model. But if you actually want to make a book of a different size, then you, you know, using different size paper, you need a different size printer. But actually we printed things with larger sizes on a printer that was not auto duplexing but then the printer tells you when to flip the pages around and it wasn't actually as, as difficult as you might think. But an auto duplexing printer makes it even easier. Once you have all your signatures, it's time to fold the paper into signature in the correct way. Once all the signatures are folded, they're placed inside the book press. Um, and there are videos of all the tools used and I'll put a link in a playlist below.
When the pages are pressed flat, they go in the vise to mark out the places where they'll get sewn together. Now you can mark and then punch each signature with an awl or you can do it this method by sawing down the line carefully and then uh, also finishing with a knife. At this point now we have the signatures folded with holes for the sewing to start. We're using a sewing frame to sew them together which enables you to use cords. Um, and here setting up the frame with metal keys underneath the board here and there'll be a total of four cords that the signatures will be sewn around. Um, the process here is pretty straightforward. You line the cords up with the cut through areas of the signatures and then you'll sew around the cord. And we're using this waxed thread for book binding. And once you've sewn um, the signatures around the cords, you add the next signature, so down the line with that one, and then continue until you've sewn all of the pieces together. This method is quite interesting because it creates a much stronger type of book than modern books. This is not the way modern books are made. This is a kind of a classic old fashioned way to make books. And then once you have all the signatures sewn into it, you are left with these cords coming out of the sides and they're trimmed a little. Now for the cover of the book, you need some hard stock. Uh, this board right here we picked up at an art supply store, but in the past, I mean, I've taken apart an old textbook um, or used just random hard stock around. You can use kind of whatever you get your hands on. You also need some paper for the end pages of the book. Here picking out some pattern ones. Uh, these are usually on the decorative side um, and a little stiffer than the other pages. Uh, so folding and gluing on some additional paper here. And this spray adhesive works really great for gluing paper to paper without getting any bubbles or anything. We sew on the end pages separately from sewing the main pages together, uh, just using some thread to connect them to the main block here. Also adding some extra glue on these first and last pages right at the seam, uh, which provides a little extra strength later on when the spine gets rounded. So now it's time to work on the spine a little. Adding glue to the back to set it up more and also thinning out the cord. And this is a special linen cord made for book binding. Once you've sewn the signatures together, the pages get a little out of whack. So the sides are no longer perfectly even. So time to, uh, to cut the three sides. You can do this with a straight edge, an eraser, or a guillotine if you have access to one, or with a tool that perhaps produces the crispest result of them all, a book plow. And the concept here is quite simple. You place the book in the vise and then slowly advance the plow with each turn, which moves the blade forward and cuts the paper. And to round the spine out, you, you hammer here and you round it um, a little bit and you get that very distinctive rounded spine. Now, what really distinguishes this method of bookbinding from more modern styles is how the cord gets incorporated into the covers of the book. So here we have the front and back pieces. Now first marking out where the holes need to be. Uh, then punching the holes and removing some material to enable the cord to, to sit flat and integrate well. Thank you. 
and then gluing the core together and weaving in through these pieces of paper. And by doing this, you really secure the registers to the book into the covers. And this is not like modern books where the covers are really just connected with some glue. Here they're actually sewn together. So it's quite neat the way it's, it's put together. This way of construction is by definition really strong. So a book made like this can be read and reread and, and really used without falling apart uh, over time. And then back into the press it goes to set up. In this book press here, you really can use it back and forth, back and forth to, to help set everything up and straighten things out. Um, so it's a nice tool to have on hand. Now to set up the spine here, first gluing on some fabric and then some additional paper to stiffen it up. And to cover these books, we're using um, this natural canvas. Of course, you could use leather here or other fabric. And while I like some of those other options, there's something quite appealing about this very basic, almost utilitarian fabric. I mean, imagine a shelf with books all covered in this fabric, your very own book collection of hardbound books covered in this classic yet basic material. I just love that. The process of covering the boards with fabric is pretty straightforward. We're using a water-based contact cement for the glue uh, that we happen to have on hand. Usually we use it for leather crafting, but it works good for this too. Of course, the trickiest thing uh, to get right is the corners and the ends of the spine. And you need just enough fabric there, uh, but not too much or it'll get bulky. And then once the fabric is glued onto the covers, you glue on the end pages, which covers the any seams and cleans up the whole thing quite nicely. Oh, and wax paper here is another thing that's handy to keep on hand, uh, just to prevent any glue from getting onto any pages where you don't want glue. Now to add a label to the book, we're adding these printed paper labels glued onto the fabric. Um, you could obviously stamp letters with a press if you want or mark it in, you know, in many different ways. And we're adding the labels to the front and to the spine. A really neat thing when you're printing your own books is of course that you can pick out what paper, what font you want to do. And what we've done here is to actually print that out on this page because you'll never remember what you did uh, and in case you liked it if you want to replicate it later on so here we have written out the paper type 24 pound 25 percent cotton the finish wove color natural paper size letter size folded font type garamond and the text font size 12 and also the printing date the location and edited by um, here you can see how, the, how we structured it. So you have the text and this is a really nice, I actually really like this font. It is great to read with. And then we have the page numbers up here and the author, John Stuart Mill, autobiography. It's a nice quality paper. Now this book on the other hand was actually made with copy paper, which yes, you can, uh, you can use that too. And you can see here that we've written uh, paper type 20 pound copy paper size, letter size folded, font type Arimo, and text font size 10. And uh, I do have to say uh, this font is not as nice to read. I mean, it looks kind of modern and cleaner, but I don't like it to read it as much at all. And the paper, the white paper is just kind of stark to me, like it feels really white. And it almost kind of feels like, it doesn't feel as professional in some ways, I would say. I feel like this, this style feels, feels like better, personally, I think. 
Another thing to add, which we didn't add, of course, is a bookmark. That would have been a nice feature. Oh, that's right. I have a little announcement. We have put the files up, the PDF files for these books up in the shop at jarbenhover.com. Um, as always, all plans, files, etc. are free for patrons $5 and up. Uh, so what this means is, if you're like, hmm, I like the idea of this, I want to bind my own books, but I don't have access to InDesign or I don't want to go through the, the work, all that trouble, uh, well, you can use one of our files. Perhaps the autobiography by John Stuart Mill looks interesting. It's actually a really good read. Uh, we also have Candide by Voltaire, one of my favorites. That was a book uh, I, I made a while ago. So you'll have the edited version ready for printing in signatures of four, just like I went over in the video. So just a little something that, um, I don't know, one or two people might be interested in. So I hope you enjoyed this glimpse into the process of binding a book from scratch. I mean, I still can't get over the fact that it is possible for you to find print and bind books for yourself. I didn't know that before learning about all this and I just think that's really neat. Not to mention, I'd take a carefully crafted library with a few books made by you over a Kindle full of files that you probably won't have access to in a couple of years any day. Uh, whereas your books, on the other hand, unless there's a fire or some jerk throws it away, is going to be there and you won't have any issues accessing it at all. The coolest technology of them all, right? Um, and these videos are brought by our patrons. Thank you so much. If you'd like to become a patron and support our channel where we go over something as obscure as bookbinding one day and cutting on the CNC the next day and then building a teardrop the week after that, uh, then we could really use your support. Uh, there are links in the description below. Okay guys, have a good one. See you soon. I do not for a moment imagine that any part of what I have to relate can be interesting to the public as a narrative or as being connected with myself. But I have thought that in an age in which education and its improvements are the subject of more, if not of profoundly.